Hey guys, my name is Hayden and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're gonna go through how React Router DOM is used to help navigate around your website. Plus, I'll also show you how you can change the content of your web page without affecting the header and footer. So you can have, for example, a navigation bar at the top and a footer at the bottom. And then the only thing that changes as you navigate around the website is the content in the middle. So firstly, if you have not checked out my previous two videos where we created the header and the footer for a website, do go check them out because that will help you get up to speed to where we are in the code base now. I'll leave a link in descriptions and have cards and all the good stuff pop up here. First, I just want to quickly go over what React Router DOM is and then we'll dive into how to change the code that we've currently got in order to use React Router DOM in an effective manner. So let's just quickly go over what React Router DOM is. It is a package in React and React native apps that allow you to navigate around a website and link certain components to certain URL patterns. So for example, you could have mywebsite.com that will render, for example, your home React component. And you can have, for example, mywebsite.com slash about, which will uh, render the about React component that you've built that will, I don't know, display all the about you information and stuff. And you can have, for example, another mywebsite.com slash shop and that will link you to the shop React component that you've made and basically the shop page and all the information related to that. So it's a way of linking URL patterns to actual React code and React components. So it's a nice way to handle that navigation around your website and have that flexibility and customization of what React components you want rendering for different URL patterns. There is a lot more, but that's just kind of a quick introduction on what it does. They're the kind of like the fundamentals of what the package does for you. So now let's jump over to Visual Studio Code where we'll install React Router DOM and set it up in our website. So as you can see here, I'm in VS Code and in our project that we're creating, there'll be a link in the GitHub description if you've not got this already or you can follow my previous videos and you should be up to this point now so what I'm going to do is open up a new terminal uh, just down here don't need any code for this and all we need to say is npm install react router dom like that make sure you've got the little um, hyphen separating press enter and that will go off and install all the various dependencies that it needs in order to install react router dom into our package into our project sorry so that is now finished installing and you can see it's added various packages to our um, package lock and package.json now. So now if I'm going, if we open up package.json, you can see down here we've got a new dependency um, in our project that is React Router DOM version 5.2. Uh, point zero. So that is all we need to do in order to install React Roots DOM. So now we can use that package and import that package into our projects and start using it. Now we've installed the React Roots DOM package into our project. We can close down that and we can close down our terminal. And I want you to navigate to app.js. So this is if you've been following along in the code tutorials before this, um, this is where you should be up to in the project. There are three main parts to React Router DOM, which is the, for example, is this is a browser app, we're using the uh, browser router. But um, depending if you're using React Native or React, there's basically three main components, a router, a switch, and a route, or a route, depending on where you are located in the world. So a route is a URL route, so for example, slash, um, so for example, you could have right here you could have um, slash which would link for example to a home page you could have slash about which links to a um, about page or an about react component um, and these specific parts here are a route um, so in order to switch between routes you need to wrap routes in switches and in order for any route to be um, active you need to wrap that into a router component so this will make more sense when i start coding it up um, so what we can do is come so the way you should kind of structure your imports as well in a react app is you should have external dependencies first followed by internal dependencies it's kind of a common practice so let's uh, do this just under here so what i'm going to say is from um from React Router DOM. So now you can see we've got that in our project. I want to import browser router as router. That'll be our router component, a switch and a root. So I've got my free, my router, my switch and my root. And then I'm gonna come down in here um, and because I, you remember when I explained at the start of the video, we wanna keep our header and our footer constant between um, pages when we change. I'm going to 
put the uh, router uh, component here. So, um, so what I'm going to do is actually just get rid of all this so it makes it nicer. So we have a router component. Inside our router component, I want a switch, which allows us to switch between routes. And then in here um, is where we can be more precise and we can actually put the routes we want to go to. So for example, I want a route um, that when, when you see um, this path in the URL, I want you to route me to, uh, uh, for now, I'm just gonna say uh, home. Uh, so that'll be our home page. And I want another route that when I change URL um, and I change it to about, it changes this to about. So that's basically it. So you have a router which can switch between different routes. And this is a route for the home page and this is a route for the about page. And you can see the only time this is gonna re-render a React component is anything that's inside or below our header and above our footer. So if I now go over to the terminal and do npm start and start um, our app. So there you can see, so what I'm gonna do actually is uh, just here, put in some line breaks just to make the gap here a little more obvious. So there we go, you can see we have our header at the top here and our footer at the bottom here, and then we have the home uh, route. And then why is it picking home? But basically because in my URL pattern up here, you can see I've got local hosts uh, port 3000. I'm not specifying anything, so that's exactly the same as, for example, doing that and having a slash at the end of that um, URL pattern. So that is rendering home there. And if I was to change this now to slash about, so if I go up to my URL and type in slash about, and press enter. Okay, so the reason why this doesn't change, I just quickly read over the docs, is because when you look, when what switch does is when it types in a URL, it will try and find the first child that matches that URL. And because this, um, I'm gonna remove that. And because this matches everything, it will always render home and never render anything else underneath it. So what I'm gonna do here is move about above the root um, home, um, so you can see. So you can see now. So what I'll do is I'll come back here. So you can see if I have slash slash doesn't match this pattern, this path pattern. So it doesn't um, render this about, uh, but it does match this pattern. So it renders home. And then if I type in slash about now, you can see uh, the content of the web page has changed, and about has been um, rendered onto the screen there. Um, and you can do this with lots of more different uh, routes that you want. So for example, if you wanted a uh, contact and you could have a contact me um, information and then when I type in contact in the URL, you see contact has changed. But what's important to note here is that because the way our app is structured, um, you can see the header and the footer component is not within the route router component, which means that the only part of the web page that is actually re-rendering is this part in the middle, which is this part here. So the header and the footer are not re-rendering when this, this changes, it's only the content in the middle, which is very optimal um, if you have, for example, like consistent headers and footers on every page, you don't actually want to change the header and footer, it's pointless re-rendering all that information, just re-render the content of the web page. So obviously this is not a very practical example because obviously you have to change the URL manually at the top here, which is obviously not what we want. We want to link buttons to be able to change um, the content on the web page. So um, React Route DOM has a element called link that we can import, um, which is we can just go up there and import it in here. And then what we can do is add that. Um, we have to add it as a child of um, router. Uh, actually, no, I don't believe that's correct. I think it can go anywhere. Um, you know, you, well, let's let's find out. So let's say um, let's say in here we're going to have a. Uh, so in order to add a link, all you have to say is I want to link um, to, uh, and this link will take me to the um, about page, um, and this is a button about. And if I save that now, what's gone on here? Yes, so that is because I'm not under the root. Yes, cool, perfect. 
Cool. So what I've done there. So yeah, I was I was right when I first stated uh, a link has to be a child of Ruta, otherwise React Ruta Dom doesn't know because it's not. Yeah, it doesn't know because what link does is it will look for a router in order to switch the route. Um, and if it's not a child of it, it can't go up the um, hierarchy tree and find um, the router. Therefore, it won't ever change the link. Um, so what I've done here is just made a link that links to the about page, which basically all this say, is saying is change the URL to slash about. And I've got a button for about. And then when I, so you can see here on the contact me page. And then if I click this uh, button about, you can see it's changed the URL to about and the content of the website's changed. Um, and similarly, I can change this to uh, contact and this to um, home. And this can be uh, button home. This can be button contact. Oh, let's just add a. Let's just add some. So I'm just adding a line right there to make it easy to distinguish. So I've got three buttons here: home, about, and contact. Uh, I'm currently on the about page. If I press the about button, the URL gets changed to about, and the content of about um, is rendered there. And obviously, nothing changes because we're already on that page. If I if I click button contact. Uh, the contact URL changes up there and contact me changes and if I hit click home you know we're in the home page here or just the you know slash directory and the content of the web page changes um, so that's basically it that is the fundamental bread and butter of using react router dom you have a router so what I'd recommend is putting router in your like um, top level app element uh, you have a switch and then a sw switch must have roots as children and then um, you can just have these links all over your website that um, you click and they change the URL pattern at the top and obviously that can render different things. Um, so it's not just pure like strings that you can put down here, you can actually put React elements. So let me show you, let's just for example take the header component. Uh, so we're going to render the header component twice now. So oh, actually let's do the footer because it will be... Uh, easier. So let's say when we're on the about page, uh, actually what we want to do is render the footer component there. So all I need to do is add footer there. Press save and you can see look when we're on the about page we get a, a, an extra footer. Uh, if I change the contact me page that is uh, gone now. Um, yeah, so that's yeah, so that's basically it. So um, now you can see how we can link uh, basically URL paths to React components here. Um, so hopefully that made sense. If that didn't, please comment below and all that good stuff. Um, I tried to make this quite simple, but um, but yeah, look, as you can see, look, when we're in this about um, page, we get an extra footer because we have a footer being rendered here and a footer being rendered down here. So this is the one down here and this is the one that we're rendering in the about content. Um, and then when we click these other buttons, obviously we're just getting home and contact me. So there we go. There is a quick tutorial of how React Router DOM works um, how you can have different React components rendering for different URL patterns and how you can have buttons which change the URL pattern so people can navigate around your website. So for example, now we can change the header navbar to when we click those buttons at the top, it actually renders, you know, home, about, portfolio, shop, blog, contact us and they can render different React components that we want for different pages. So hopefully in the future, if you like this tutorial series, what I will do is like, you know, build an about page, build a contact me page, build a shop page, um, and then we can link React through to DOM up to um, being able to like, you know, click that button and it renders that React component so you can see that changing on the screen. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe, like, all that good stuff. It helps me out, um, It, you know, if you think I'm making good videos, please comment down below. I'd appreciate the comment. If you think I'm making bad videos, please also comment down below because um, I don't know what I need to improve until you guys tell me. Um, so yeah, check out my other videos in this tutorial series. There'll be more coming out soon. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a great day, guys. See ya.